Okay, so we try to So obviously we go for the solar heat gain uh for Telvilla equation. Yes, do you remember the Telvilla equation? Uh H W E. Uh, that equation can determine the performance of the solar collector again. So this is the thing that we have covered previously. So so just skip this one. Okay, so uh, see from this diagram, uh, this sun uh, set, I would say set, uh, with this mouse like this, Pathroma also set, and the father taking bus also set, and mother wash dishes also set. Do you have any idea why everybody set this picture? Not due to the PKP or PKPB. <laughs> okay. Any idea why everybody said even the solar collector also said not only the son, not only the father, not only the yeah correct Jeremy due to the placement of the um okay so by having this kind of this this thing i will try to sketch this one by having this kind of thing it seems like it's a block block is solar collector uh, to gain the high heat, okay. so that the father can enjoy the shower with the hot water, and also the mother can use the dishwasher uh, accordingly. So that's why, that's why by having this kind of removing the the shadow, I will say the shadow the blockage for the solar thermal collector, then they can receive uh, the radiance to produce the hot water and also to produce the hot water as well for the distribution. Okay, so. Okay. okay, so this is the basic of the industrial process related to the uh, hot water. Okay, so let's so just go for very quick view. They have the solar collector, as you know, to produce the hot water. And at the same time, they have the photovoltaic panel uh, to to circulate, uh, to to gen, uh, to power the pump. Okay, so by having the solar, by, by having the same resource, which is the sun ray, so, uh, for the light part, we will capture by the photovoltaic to produce the electricity, and for the heat part, we will be absorbed by the solar collector to produce the heat, which means uh, we manage to get the electric and the thermal useful heat. Simultaneously, uh, and yet by this kind of operation, you also can power your sequestration pump of your solar collector to secure all the hot water uh, in your station. Okay, as simple as that. 
So this is the one of the application that we can refer with uh, hotel, uh, that health center, hospital, car wash, sport facility, school shower facility, and others which require the uh, hot water. Okay. So this is the another type of the solar thermal collector. Previously we learned uh, two types, which is uh, unglazed uh, solar collector, and secondly is the glazed. Uh, solar collector. So this time around, uh, the third type of the solar collector, which is the evacuated food collector, which is uh, higher cost uh, and less or no uh, commercial losses, high temperature, for climate, fragile, installed, can be more complicated. Okay. So this is how it looks related to the tube, of the evacuated tube. It's a quite expensive. Eh? Maybe this this only one single tube. It may cost you approximately uh, one thousand ringgit only for this one tube. It depends on the quality, but it's quite uh, fragile because it's made from the glass. So you need to install this kind of facility or this collector in the form of the uh, I would say stable area uh, because some of the researcher or the user. I install it maybe just uh, side by side from the road, which is when do the heavy truck or something, the vibration, and that one will be continuously experienced to the negative tube, and yet the glass will broke. Okay, so, so just need to consider the fragile issue. Okay, but the good part, uh, this the device able to produce uh, the higher temperatures which means better efficiency in terms of the uh, in terms of the uh, power generation i mean uh, this evaluated here higher efficiency compared to the uh, glaze and unglazed uh, solar thermal collector okay so this is the sample of this evaluated tube Okay, so this one line, one line. So this is the basic uh, equation related to the solar efficiency collector. Okay, so this one is the sun ray. Okay, assume this one is the sun ray. I is the irradiance. Uh, e C is the area of collector. Okay, so this one is the uh, assuming this this square shape is the collector, which is A C. Area of collector. Um, PA, P ambient. Okay, P ambient. I is the radius. Okay. You see the coefficient heat losses uh, to the surrounding, which is in this case uh, top heat losses by the convection. PS is the P sky. P, uh, P ambient is the P ambient. Okay. Um, Q is a Q useful, which is the power that we produce from the solar collector. Uh, sorry, this one is not, this is not the TA or T ambient. This one is the T is transmittivity. Okay, so transmittivity and A is the absorptivity. Okay, so meaning that uh, if you have the collector which have uh, good transmittivity, which is normally in the range of 0 until 1, okay, and normally up to the 0 0.8, and the absorptivity, uh, of course, uh, in the range of 0 until 1, the best uh, in the range of 0 0.8 up to 1, you manage to get the better uh, collector. Okay, so by using this equation, uh, it should be a soft term, uh, useful, which is fun, useful, which is the Q you are required. I is I refer to the radius, EC refer to the area of collector, okay. and then general so energy losses. Okay, losses, collected losses. Useful, of course. Uh, Q useful equal to the total, okay, minus the losses. So this one is the losses. This one is the total. Tau, this one is tau, alpha, irradiance, area collector. This one is the coefficient heat loss. Okay, coefficient heat loss, the more loss coefficient. Okay. Area, area collector, and also the sky and the MB, okay. Uh, I'm not sure with the TS. Okay, sorry, this is not the T sky. TS is the T storage. Mean that the average T 
okay, by the collect. Okay. Um, efficiency or thermal efficiency, it can be rewrite uh, by referring this governing equation. The uh, tau alpha, tau alpha means that they already divided the radius over area collector. Okay. Uh, you see. Okay. Uh, a across uh, the surface, uh, the ambient divided by irradiance. Okay. So a line of the slope you see is the intercept is the tau alpha. Okay, intercept is the tau alpha, and the slope is the thermal losses, which is we can refer from this diagram. Meaning that the the intersection for this vertical line is the tau alpha. Okay, I'll try to draw this one. Okay, so this one is the tau alpha. Okay, so the slanting, the value of the slanting is the UL. UL is this one. Uh, UC, this one. Uh, coefficient heat losses. Okay. So then from this graph, we should be able to determine based on this slanting or based on the U value or UL value or UC value, which one refer to the higher heat losses. Okay. So you need to know uh, referring to the unglazed uh, glaze and so the evacuated cube. Okay, so you need to understand this one uh, to determine what is your required or dedicated solar collector, uh, the, the suitable or appropriate solar collector you want to use so that you can expect what is the efficiency based on this diagram, based on the tau alpha, transmittivity and absorptivity, and so for the horizontal plane, which is your the ambient. The ambient okay. above the ambient, okay. the greater than the ambient, okay. divided by the radius. Okay. So, solar distillation. Uh, I think we just go on this one uh, very straightforward. Just the matter of another application related to the solar thermal by, by using the approach to distill the water. Okay, I'll try not necessarily uh, to boil water at 100 C to distill it. Okay, so energy can be used for water distillation, like other application, cost of which energy is higher than alternative. Okay, so that's the thing related to the solar distillation. Okay, so this one of the principle of the solar distillation. Uh, so just skip this one because this one is just the, the application or approach. Another approach of using the solar energy to produce the solar distillation. Okay. Uh, cooking, washing to deter per day, person, continuous, okay, better performance. Okay. So, normally, uh, if you notice this, this solar steel uh, approach been used uh, to the rural uh, country okay, because they can produce it. By using the standalone system, uh, no need a large uh, facility or complex uh, facility. You just go for the uh, this kind of cover uh, during the during the sunny day. Uh, and then the water will draw up, and then we try to collect all the water by the distilled water. Okay, same goes as that one. Yeah, efficiency for the single effect basin, 55%. So, so the big idea of this thing, just to mention that the solar energy as well, since uh, beside produce the hot water, beside produce the electricity, we also uh, able to produce the steam water. Okay, so let's do So this uh, I take from the UKM sample, which is how they create uh, the proper steel uh, chamber to produce the steel water. Okay. Basically, with the salt, okay. power condenser, okay. condenser through insulation. 
So this is the thing. So this is the manufacturing process of the distilled water. Okay. So uh, you can you see this one? This is the water over here. It's like the water. So that that's the the water that we harvest from the distilled water. Okay. So it's a very pure water. Okay. It's like the evaporates water. But we we try to segregate the the salt in the water. So on our point, I think this one is already covered previously during our previous slide. So we skip this one. Sub gradient point. Okay, so it's so very straightforward. You have the sun ray, and then you also have the heat losses on the top, and then uh, slowly you will try to heat up your your pool. Okay, so this one is the another advantages of the solar point throughout the world in this case was India Australia okay solar point advantages low investment cost for digital collection area global storage is corporate into solar cost very low cost diffuse radiation very large surface can be built the large scale energy in the possible expensive cleaning of large collector surface in dust area is avoided okay so they just uh, put all the collector inside the pool okay. and yet uh, to, to, to heat up the pool okay. so yet some of the researchers also make a pool as a part of the collector all right just to heat up the water and then try to by the way it's not efficient it's not, it's not efficient but very low cost right? because you just exposed to the environment Okay, so this one is the another approach motivation for solar cooling system. Okay, collector are more expensive component. Okay, of course, collector somehow would improve economy of solar heating. Okay, cooling summer maybe is considered with expensive solar. Okay, so yep. this one is the another application related to the solar energy, uh, vapor compression, absorption, and desiccant. Okay, maybe I will try the highlight first the desiccant. I think this might be a new for you guys. Okay, so this one is a basic refrigeration system. Okay, for power, okay, evaporator, okay. condenser, everything. Okay, throttling valve. Okay, so this is like this. This is the situation. So condense water. Okay, throttle uh, to give the uh, uh, pressure different. Okay. pressure different. And the evaporator to cool the system and yet go back to the power and circulate uh, from time to time. Okay, so this is the thing. Okay. So I think I just skip this one. I think you all already know about this thing. There's engine, compressor, evaporator. Okay. So I think there should be no problem. Sterling cycle, um, also one of the application related to the solar cooling. Yeah, I want to skip this one. I go to the okay, the seeker. Absorption uh the seeker. Uh the seeker uh is uh I'll say the the material uh so it's the material um, uh, to go for the to to dry to dry the moisture so the desiccant is the material uh high hygroscopic material okay is a part of the silica gel a very salt um chloride extreme chloride Okay, so silica gel. If you notice when you buy something, the new furniture or the new maybe the new, I don't know maybe the new item, and then you have a small packet inside that which is have the a brit a, a brittle or the particle the small particle in the white color. So this one is a part of the desiccant which is they avoid the moisture, so they they will absorb all the moisture and yet. 
uh, to, to avoid any 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 mold or any fungus or related to the bacteria who can live with moisture. So that's the purpose of the desiccant to absorb of moisture content in whichever application. Okay, adiabatic demonstration follow a reverse adiabatic situation process. There are uh, there's a uh, air uh, is heated. Okay, so no, this this the one of the diagram uh, to show the design of the uh, desiccant. Uh, sometimes they call this one is the desiccant wheel. Okay, wheel, uh, roda wheel uh, like a tire. Right? So we, so it depends. Of course, uh, the, the second have their grade. So it depends on the, the, the size okay, and the quality of the silica uh, of the, the second part. Okay. So basically, uh, we, let's say we assume this one is the the second, the second. Okay, sorry. So this one is the heat exchanger. So okay, we go for this one. This one, right? Um, so what is the function of the desiccant? Uh, let's say from start here. Let's say we get the air flow from the atmosphere and then uh, the the second wheel will try to absorb all the uh, moisture content from the air okay and yet from the i would say the moisture air before enter the second and up to the number second the air become hot or dry air and yet flows to the system. Okay. So as simple as that. So the function of this desiccant is to uh, remove oh sorry to, to, to reduce or remove I would say uh, the moisture content uh, in the air uh, to become more dry and yet undergo for processes of the dedicated uh, design or system. Okay, so that's the function of the uh, the second wheel or the second. Okay, so uh, but uh, the I uh, but the drawback of the system. Any anyone? Uh, any idea? What's the drawback of the, the second wheel when we put system uh, the, the the second wheel in the system or the second? Uh, yeah. Any idea? The system. Right. No idea. Uh, high temperature, dry air. Yes, uh, we're in dry air because uh, in real practice or for, for the now, we we have the, I would say the air with the high moisture content. So we, if you want to do the drying activity by using the air, so it will be nicer to have the desiccant which can try to reduce the moisture content in the air so that we can have the better efficiency in terms of the drying because we have the dry air instead of the moisture air to be uh, as a part of the drying uh, uh, drying flow okay so so this dry air so because the solar look at rush okay correct okay, so. all right high temperature okay good um I think the the not that high temperature, uh, was the was the level. Okay, but basically the drawback of we are putting this the second wheel is we have the experience to go for the low velocity of the air. 
Okay, let's say the hair is without this one, it can be go directly quite faster, okay, with high velocity perhaps. But when we have this kind of the, the second wheel, uh, it becomes uh, another resistance uh, for the flow to enter the to enter the system, which uh, increase uh, so we drop the velocity. Okay, so we drop the velocity. So meaning that when it enters to the system. Uh, the system will experience a uh, low velocity instead of the higher velocity due to the resistance by the scan wheel uh, to absorb the moisture content. Is that okay? Was uh, it? So, so that's the drawback. So that's why we, we need to be uh, careful to investigate uh, this kind of situation because of course uh, we know there are three major important things for the drying purposes. Firstly, uh, is your, uh, the, the, the wind velocity, okay? the wind velocity, the, the temperature, and also the moisture content. So by compromising all these three factors, uh, you should be able to get a better optimal flow uh, just to ensure that your, uh, your product is, uh, can be dried accordingly to the desired output or temperature okay so this one we just go straight forward estimate daily work okay it's simple evaluation procedure so okay so this is the maybe the step to calculate uh, calculate the simple evaluation procedure okay so maybe we can try to look this one in a brief way estimate daily water load okay estimate water heating load okay determine solar resource calculate solar system size mid load and the sun and the size radially oversize okay calculate annual energy saving calculate annual cost saving estimate cost system calculate saving okay so this one is the thing that we can refer uh, to calculate or to to predict uh, to estimate the solar water heating system okay so this is the equation that you need to use uh, to estimate your consumption. Okay, L refer to the load. Okay, load. Okay. M mass flow rate, mass flow of water per day in terms of the kg per day. Okay, and this is the conversion from kg per gallon. If you are giving in the form of the gallon, uh, T hot. Okay, T hot means that uh, in the range of Kelvin for Celsius, it depends. Okay. So, the cold, okay, for the temperature of 50 C, 80. So, and refer to your usage for dormitory, gallon per person, or approximately 13, hotel 15, or hospital 18, office 1, food service 2.4, resident 40, school gallon day per student 1.8. This one is only your reference. Eh? Uh, it's the it's your reference uh, to do the calculation. Let's say you go for your, uh, let's say, dormitory. Okay? So you estimate per person per day approximately 13 gallon. And then 13 gallon convert uh, for this uh, kilogram and then you just uh, minus, sorry times up to the 3.785 to get in the form of the kilogram. And yet try to calculate accordingly based on the temperature and also based on the specific heat of the water. Okay. Yeah. And then you can get what is the estimated estimated load of your water heating. Okay. So approximately you guys uh, how get how many gallon per day per person uh you as a person i mean you your own almost zero right almost zero <laughs> huh? you, you are using hot water for your shower so let's say uh, let's say you are using sometimes yes okay <laughs> okay sometimes it uh, depends uh, okay no no yes okay Let's say we go for average, eh? go for average, let's say we go for, but you see this one, resident, 40 gallon day per person. Oh. Okay. 
So in Malaysia, I think we are not go until that much lah. Maybe we can go, let's say, maybe, maybe in average, maybe less than ten, okay, less than ten per day, right? Ten per day. But but that is how we we try to play. we try because the utilization of the hot water is depends on by the condition for each. Let's say for the food service, they produce 2.4 gallon per meal. Okay, per meal, yeah? per meal. So you need to careful on this one. 18 gallon day per bag. Okay, so you need to uh, careful on that kind of unit. Okay, so this one is already shown obviously. I just want to check this one. It's a Yaman and Sudan, somewhere around here. If I'm not mistaken, okay. uh, which is high energy resource over there. Okay. Um, by having this kind of the the previous calculation, the L load, okay, load, and then you go for the efficiency of the solar. Normally, they will give you straight away zero point four, and also the IMAX or irradiance. Okay. So in the question, they will specify what's the IMAX, so you can choose and you pick the one. And then you can calculate what is your suitable area collector. Okay, you know your load. Okay, you know your efficiency of your collector. You know your radius, maximum radius of your collector, and then put all in in this equation, and yet you can estimate what is the approximate area of your collector to be used is a part of your solar system okay and then after that annual energy saving okay uh, area of collector uh, time i average or irradiance average and then the average of the solar thermal okay divided okay this one is for 365 means that uh, efficiency of solar for for one year yes 365 you have the efficiency of the boiler okay uh, because uh, it refer to the ratio so the difference between the ratio of the solar and boiler is your saving and then we calculate uh, the area and the radius and then we can get the annual energy saving okay i a v e i average irradians average okay average so you need to careful on the equation uh, on the unit because some of the student might be have the difficulty to understand what's the kilo hour per meter square per day okay. and the uh, efficiency of the boiler over here uh, auxiliary heater efficiency let's so say the boiler using the gas so this is the range okay let's say the boiler using the electric this is the range and etc okay so if you notice the efficiency uh, will be different for each time of uh, equipment. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, for each resources, gas, electric, propane, okay, and oil. Okay. And yet, after you get the area of collector, and you get you get the annual saving, energy saving. And then you can also calculate the solar system cost by having this AC, which is the area of collector. See solar mistake. No. Hello? Is that any weird sound just now? Uh, okay. C solar, C solar means that uh, the cost solar per the, the cost of the solar, C solar, C solar per unit area. So in dollar, three hundred dollar, one thousand dollars, and fifty dollar. Okay. So since the solar per meter square, so you can have your all the the total cost because you are have the EC in the form of the meter square as well. Okay, just times the C solar and get the total system cost. Okay. And then annual cost uh, saving. 
you have the ES, which is the annual saving just now uh, from the previous calculation, ES over here. Okay. Over here. And then uh, the CE, cost of auxiliary energy. Okay, you just go this one. Let's say you are using the electricity, which is same as uh, electricity, for example. Okay. And then you go, that's is the rate of the cost of auxiliary, uh, auxiliary energy. Okay, you have this one, and you have this one. You can get the annual cost saving. Okay. So it will cost you in the form of the per year. So meaning that you have the saving of a per year basis, yearly basis. And then after that, after you get all the calculation related uh, to the uh, saving, Uh, saving to investment ratio. So this is the quite crucial because we want to know uh, is that worse to have this kind of uh, solar collector uh, according to the our investment, okay, based on our load, based on our saving everything. So, and the short name is the S I R saving investment ratio. Okay, so S. Uh, PWF, okay, project is cost effective according to the standard. If, okay, so this is the uh, important. If the SIR saving to investment ratio greater than one, so we can assume that it's uh, worse to have the system. If less than the one, uh, not worse. PWF present work factor for future saving stream, uh, 15.5 years for 55 years. I think a 4.1 real discount rate specified by an ISD for 1999. Okay, so let's do that. Simple payback period, uh, SPB. Uh, sorry, payback. Same thing, payback. P payback. Okay, SPB. Is the C, okay, C cost per uh, solar. Okay. Project cost effective according to the SPB. Less than 10 years, consider worse to have the system because uh, the greater than 10 years, meaning that is uh, quite sometimes to obtain the benefit by having the system. Okay, so we in this case we try to conclude that uh, lesser than 10 years are still affordable uh, to invest this kind of system. Okay, so C. Okay, C. The cost of system solar S, okay, S is the annual cost saving. Okay, so this is the basic uh, equation that we can imply all the equation just now. Uh, we just go this one a very quick view just to get the flow of the solution uh, M or for the mass for the four person. So each person using 40 gallon, okay, and times to the 3785 convert to the kilogram to become 606 kilogram per day. Okay, and then for the M, we got the M, C, uh, straight forward from the specific heat from the water, T hot and T cold, we just go straight away. 50 degrees C minus 18 C or Celsius, and we managed to get this load is 22.6 kilowatt hour per day. Let's say the location of that particular person is in Denver. Denver, Denver, Denver means uh, somewhere in US. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, somewhere in US. Okay. Uh, IMAX at the particular location is 6.5 and the uh, radius and the uh, average is 5 for 5 okay and then we go for the calculation of to determine the error collector equal to the load which is this load 2.6 divided by the efficient of the solar which is 0 0.4 okay and i max is the 6.1 which is 
9.3 meter squared. So in other words, uh, the proximate area to meet the load for the four person and everything for the four person, four person which use the 40 gallon per person per day approximately 9.3 meters squared. And then uh, by the annual energy saving at the collector, uh, we get the 9.3 just yes, now. Okay. And I average from here 5.5, 5.5. Uh, efficient of the solar, okay, 0 0.4 divided by the solar boiler, uh, 0 0.7, and you manage to get 7665 kilowatt per year and more saving. This one is the cost, total cost of the solar is equal to the cost solar per meter square times the meter square, and then you get 650 square times 9.3 meter square. And 6,000 or less 6,045. And then um, from there, try to calculate the S, which is the ES, uh, annual saving, and the cost. Okay. Uh, rating using the, I would say, using the electric, uh, 0 0.08, or we refer this one. Zero, okay, electric, yes, correct. Using the electricity 0 0.084, uh, and then you can get uh, 644 per year. Okay, what is the uh, annual cost saving? Okay, just now E is the annual energy saving, so this one is the annual cost saving. Okay, annual cost saving. and then SIR uh, investment. Solar investment rate ratio, solar investment ratio, SIR. Okay, as WPF, PWF, solar is that uh, 644, which is from here. Uh, PWF, okay, PWF refer to that. Present world factor, okay, present world factor. Um, divided by C, cost, so it's cost, 6045, and you get 1.65. And knowing that the SIR, let's say just so mentioned just now, if the SIR is greater than once, meaning that it's a worse to invest in this kind of system. Here we managed to get above one, which is 4.65. Okay, so that's the basic calculation related to the solar thermal energy. Okay, so this is the another sample of the application of the solar thermal. So we just go with uh, roughly. In the diagram 2000 square feet under collector. Okay, you're using the angles, eh? 35 square feet in the install, mid 49 set of coal, save 8.5 million in the pool, you know, saving 5,400 install. So, there another sample of the solar thermal collector. Same, so this one, okay. So this one, oh, it's a quite, you know, it's quite expensive huh? by, by investing the tube. Okay, just imagine this one. So they have the floor over here. Okay, so of course, eh, uh, even that one is the evacuated tube, you also need to consider the placement, how to put your evacuated tube accordingly, or else you might experience a low irradiance due to the shading or blockage from the surrounding. So that's why they try to, they tend to put this uh, evacuated tube uh, on the ground, I mean, uh, with the open space uh, to ensure that they manage to get the greater irradiance from the sun. Okay, so three cross loop, heat, air changer, preheat, put, break, white paint, black construction, for face protection. Okay, okay so, so this is the things that been used for this regulated tube. Okay, so this is the another thing. So 15,000 square feet for a bullet. So this one, another um, type of the collector, but they try to have the parabolic through the collector. So anyone can have any idea what is the purpose of the parabolic uh, for the 
for the for the collector. Yeah. This 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 parabolic this 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 curve. Uh, this one is the parabolic. This one. Uh, this one. Okay. So then, anyone? No, what is the? Concentrating the sunlight. Uh, uh, the basic idea. Okay, thank you for your response. Uh, and also looking. Okay, so basically, uh, very straightforward. Uh, we know that the efficiency of the solar collector uh, will increase by having the high thermal or irradiance. So that by having the concentrating parabolic, it uh, try to concentrate all the uh, all the irradiance that might perhaps a nearby somewhere in the collector so that it can be concentrated to get a better or gain the irradiance for that particular collector. By having that kind of situation, they will be able to have uh, greater irradiance leads uh, to the greater performance of the solar collector. Okay. So that's the basic. Some of the things might use the scan of shape. Let's say this one is your solar collector. So this one is your this one is your concentrator. Uh, uh, some of the part might use the let's say this is your collector and they go in the parabolic. Uh, so this one parabolic. So some of the design might be straight wood, just a flat uh, left and right, just to ensure that the reflect from the sun ray to the collector, reflect the sun ray to the collector to obtain the higher gain of the solar radius. Okay, thank you for the solar response. Operation and maintenance, I think just this one is a very logic, uh, logic, logic thinking. Eh? So it's a very very straightforward operation and maintenance in the operator training okay, most of operation for information safety consideration uh, meeting personal training dimension maintenance and visual inspection major component maintenance troubleshooting and repair so i managed um, some of you raise hand okay, okay. raise hand Yes, correct. To concentrate the sunlight. Okay. Okay. Uh, solar system and an option. Okay. I think this one is a very straightforward. Uh, you can think about it by your own. And this is for this contract. You pay for the liquid energy, quality energy, service contract, facility, uh, dust maintenance. The property, the inventory, utility bills, etc. Okay. Okay. So this is the most of the problem that we discover um, in terms of the solar thermal collector. Okay. But, uh, most of it relates to the Temperature sensor, okay. or working fine. Which one? This color refer to what? Working fine. Is the problem? <laughs> so this color is blue. Is not. Try to erase. 
So working fine, problem. So maybe if after certain times, uh, this the issue problem occur for the system. Uh, I'm not wonder uh, by having this kind of issue because what we are dealing with the hot water, which is maybe the hot water might affect some of the sensor, temperature sensor, temperature sensor mount, okay, and also based on the the circulation because uh, when do we have the system with the, the high temperature and also the low temperature, you might have the the control, okay, the control to ensure that the uh, uh, system working according to your desired setup. So by having the, but at the same time, you have the fluctuation of the irradiant. So the changing, the frequent changing of this kind of uh, situation might lead uh, to the problem of the PC board, okay, the, the relay. Okay. So, so that's why we need to ensure that the system working in a good position to avoid uh, the problem occur uh, frequently. Okay. So the maintenance should take into place uh, to ensure that we can have an optimum utilization of the system. For cooking solar heating, anyone look for the best opportunity with your agency, large water node, high cost, constant load, area of collector, facility, facility, chamber means that everything, everything in order. Okay. Required for success. Uh, I think this one is a very straightforward, appropriate application. So you know, you need to know, you want the solar thermal collector for for the what purposes? For low thermal, or medium thermal, or high thermal. Okay, and then try to calculate based on the uh, convincing data. Perhaps let's say your company uh, or your organization uh, need the appropriate uh, kilogram of hot water so that by having that kind of information you can have your own design uh, properly okay maintenance is uh, indicator operation maintenance okay properly size okay so this the thing that I mentioned just now properly size okay and the size or not oversized require no manual intervention of a reasonable payback so payback in our case, we try to set uh, less than 10 years okay, for the sort of Okay, require no manual intervention. Conservation, okay, facility manager responsible. Uh, so this one, uh, conservation first, of course, design for first guarantee, visual performance. Okay, so this one is a very straightforward. Huh? You may read this one first. Performance strategy, negotiate for bid. Portion available. Out of the shelf, request the proposal, performance contract. Okay, preparing procurement. So, I think this one is the more to the documentation how you want to convince your management uh, to, to, to pursue them uh, to get this kind of investment. So, just skip this one. Uh, so, so, this one. Okay. So this is the criteria that you need to consider or you need to ensure that you are proposing a winning proposal uh, dedicated for the water heating proposal. Technical merit, cost, dedicated cost performance, suggestions approach, review technical proposal, ask bidder to respond, submit the best and final cost. Okay. And this is the standard that has been used uh, to the Uh, to the work related to the solar thermal uh, collector or some thermal technology, actually 80,000 solar heating design. Okay, so this is the standard we use uh, to design, can be used to, for your design. Operating guideline and minimum standard for certifying solar water heating system. So this is the guideline. Uh, 
need, especially when you install the system uh, in the industry or your organization, make sure that you uh, follow all the standard, especially uh, related to the safety factor. Okay, so we finish uh, the first one. We take a break for a uh, five minute and then we uh, continue for the next uh, session. Okay. So, okay, so we break five minutes and then we continue back uh, after all. Uh, we the end, so try to show the Uh, in the meantime, those who want to ask related to the things, especially to the, to the session, you may jot down in your chatting column so that so we try to read and try to answer or respond. Or else we will try to open for the discussion for everybody. No problem.
Okay, guys, uh, we continue uh, for the next slide related to the solar drying technology as well. Um, we try to... Can you guys see the slide? Okay, yes, okay, good. Okay, so I'll try to share it, right? Good, okay. Have to share it. Okay, so this slide uh, refer to the another, I would say another approach of using the solar thermal for the application of the crop right, okay? So I take this slide from K. Sofian, or Kamarizam Sofian, from Solar Energy Research Institute, University of Malaysia. Malaysia. So, as we know, um, the solar thermal collector um, is full, uh, produce the useful heat. It can be in the form of the water or air. For previously, we already studied related to the air or water, so hot water for domestic or for industry organization. So this time around, we will learn uh, the useful heat in the form of the air, specifically uh, for the crop drying. Okay, so let, let's see how it goes. Uh, basically, in this slide, uh, we undergo a quite numbers of slides, but then most of them related to the diagram or picture related to the system. So that I think maybe we can try to complete this one uh, accordingly before we end the session of the class. Okay. Everybody okay? Still still in the pace of study or as uh, doing the others. Okay. Uh, still okay. Okay, thank you, Basilia. So we just recap related to the energy source. So bear in mind, we are in the week, week four, but we are still in the range of the solar. Right? So we still do not enter the geothermal wave, uh, wind energy, hydro energy. But maybe on that part, we will try to go faster because I want you guys uh, to know. Uh, in a good manner in terms of the solar relation so that you can have the appreciation in terms of the utilization of the one of the most abundant resource uh, which is we are blessed in the equator to get the sun ray or irradiance so solar radiation or direct solar energy thermal energy direct solar energy photovoltaic and thermal okay photovoltaic convert light to electricity and thermal convert the heat can be useful heat in the form of water or air. Okay, so this is the thing. Uh, if I can try to jot this one. Okay, solar drying. So now we try to go for the solar drying. Okay. One of the most promising application of solar energy for drying crop. Okay, so this the at the Bangi University of Bangsa and Malaysia. Okay. So they have the some sort of device. The lighting, the lighting is that they go for the uh, better roofing uh, area, better roofing area. Yeah, they have the, the lighting. 
because uh, they they just use the the sun as a part of their light, so that's why they call for the daylighting. If you notice this one, this one is the uh, wind energy uh, on the roof of the this this house solar pumping system. Okay, so we have the collector uh, to pump or to produce the hot water. Sky simulator, uh, they try to mimic the outside uh, irradiance from the sun uh, to produce in-house uh, solar simulator or sky simulator. Grid connected photovoltaic or GCPV, if you still remember, we have the two types, OGPV and GCPV. So this one is the GCPV, means that this system is connected uh, to the grid, okay, to the grid, to the TNB grid. Okay. Solar hydrogen. Uh, using the solar energy to extract the the bonding of the H two O, okay, to be to, to 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 gain the H or hydrogen H two. Okay. The bucket tube, uh, as we discussed previously, uh, is the one of the type of the solar thermal collector to produce the high temperature of thermal application in the form of water. Solar simulation, uh, same most as the sky simulator, uh, to mimic the sun ray from the outside uh, by using or doing it indoor. Solar assist, okay. So solar assist drying meaning that uh, they do the drying, but of course they will insert some of the desiccant, okay, to, to to reduce the moisture content, to ensure that they obtain the right air to do the um, drying parts on the agriculture product or the marine product. Okay, so this is the time of the So in they have the solar energy research park, which is at the University of Malaysia. So agriculture produce is intended to be store must be right first. Okay, so agriculture produce that is intended to be stored must be dry first so it depends eh? so let's say you need the agriculture agricultural uh, things so we store to dry first primary amount of energy is required for conventional commercial scale drying system traditional method of drying such as open air drying way to product to be dried is exposed directly to the sun has many disadvantages such as degrading a wind blow debris rain inside infestation human and animal interference which will result in contamination of the product reduce dependence of the passive cost environmental friendly so does anyone uh, want to add any uh, disadvantage uh, by having the open side rain anyone want to try What's the disadvantage when we go for the open sun drying? Which is we just put the the food or the maybe the the, the food or the, the fruit or the fish um to the outside. Anyone want to try? What is the advantages or sorry the disadvantages? Depends on weather. Yes, one of the things. So depends on the weather. Uh, they say you tend to dry your whatever agricultural product. So you need to, of course, you need to depends on the weather on that particular area or environment. And one more thing, uh, of course, you can control uh, what is the rate of the moisture you want to dry out, to dry out right because let's say you have the very high moisture of let's say whatever uh, the fish let's say you want to dry your fish right? and then uh, until what extent uh, you want to uh, try to dry your fish because you are not sure what is the moisture content from your fish 
so that it might be a very over dried or might be some of the moisture still inside the fish which is it may cause to the quality uh, of the product so the control environment is as quite loose in terms of the open sun drying so, so that's why we go for the other alternative by using the solar drying uh, to and we embedded with the, some of the control system so that we can uh, try to control uh, according to the desired uh, setting or based on the uh, customer requirement okay. beside the uh, this dependence uh, dependence on the uh, fossil fuel okay, environmental friendly okay so this is the thing that might concern by others Okay, so of course, when we, are, when we are looking for this kind of situation, of course, every commodity have their own dedicated uh, drying time based on their uh, moisture content. So, so that's why it might take some uh, longer time. It may be take hours daily or months or weekly. So it depends. So this kind of thing might be controlled by knowing the condition of the uh, agricultural product so that we can try to custom the dedicated drying chamber uh, assist by the solar system to reduce the drying time compared to the conventional approach by open sun drying to become the dedicated uh, drying system which lead to the faster drying rate okay so this is the another sample of the uh, agricultural product okay 100 hours okay? 100 hours one day seven day so this one is considerably uh, is a good day lah. good day means that uh, every day is a uh, not the red, rainy day okay uh, so every day is a sunny day so that's why we, so you just imagine this one uh, for sun dry sun seven day for using the diesel five to seven hours okay so just imagine the shortage of this thing but of course the diesel have the drawback due to the cost of the diesel uh, the emission so that's why we go for the solar so we are not dependent mostly to the diesel only So this the reason, might perhaps, uh, why we are using the drying. It's a part of our processes with the solar. Mm, Crops are produced seasonally and need to be preserved in order to ensure continuous supply. Crop must be dried accordingly in order to produce high quality product. Crop rate account for 10 to 25 percent in the energy consumption. Using fossil fuel for drying purpose cause environmental hazard involve the cost of transportation, conventional fuel, soil drying is the oldest method of preservation of crop and food. Sun drying has been practiced since the beginning of the agriculture era. So, so that's the reason or motivation why we go for the drying uh, activity. So drying principle, okay. Unborn free water, water molecules or water molecules that hydrogen bonded. So by right, to make it simple, uh, the moisture content inside the inside the crops. Okay. Chemical process, okay, volatile process. Okay. So basically, uh, the hydration involved simultaneously application. Heat transfer, moisture content, okay. vapor products. Process may involve fluid air through the structure during the dehydration process due to the complex and variety varying structure. So this is the uh, anyone know what is the relation uh, relative humidity? Do you want do you have any idea? Uh, in Malaysia, specifically, we have a quite high uh, humidity. 
it can be up to the during the season, I mean the raining season, it can be up to the 80% but for the normal case, uh, in the range of the 60%. Okay, so it depends on the situation for the sunny day or the sun duration or season, it can go for 40 to 50, but it's still relatively uh, uh, humid compared to the other strata. Because we are blessed with the rainforest plus the raining season. Okay. Relative air humidity also so this is the table just for the party storage. Yeah, for the party storage. Okay. So okay, dried cocoa beans. Okay, maybe uh, we have a few type of the agriculture product. Maybe we can only focus for this dried cocoa beans. So peel off the skin, everything, and then from the tree, okay, is the cocoa. Then try to peel off and get the, the seed, and then go for the process everything, okay. Then show everything. So basically, the drain, the drying of the part. So this is how it looks like. Uh, traditional drying cocoa beans. So drying on the cemented floor, okay, on the floor. Okay, they try to dry it. Okay. So drying under transparent roof, okay, so on the transparent roof, using a bamboo mid uh, on the cemented floor, okay, so they lay uh, one of the layer uh, from the cemented floor uh, with the bamboo, uh, okay, and then they try to go for the processes to dry it okay. and then conventional drying of cocoa bean okay jet heater using cosine as heat house so they blow the hot air okay by the machine okay jet what jet heater over here okay and some of the parts are using rubber wood as a heat source okay so they try to burn burn underneath the, the the plate uh, to give to heat up all the cocoa bean for some of the industry uh, using LPG as a heat source and with the stirrer okay, just to ensure that we can dry it uh, evenly okay, for the cocoa bean. Okay. So this is another part but this one is the anchovies. Okay. Uh, so you can see this one uh, from the fisherman, okay, from the boat, everything. And go for the netting to catch the fish, everything. And some of it, try to dry and frozen and go for your, and for the cleaning of the fish. Okay. So maybe you can go with this one. Okay. Um, open sun drain. And some of them put on the mat. Of the bamboo, so this is the on the tray or the bamboo tray. Okay, and some of the better technology they go for the chamber that or drying cabinet, okay, but they are using the diesel as a heat source. Okay. So they have the drying cabinet over here. Okay. So paddy as well. Okay, so I just skip this one. Uh, more, more or less the same. It's just a meter of the type of the agricultural product. A flat bed dryer using diesel as heat source. Okay, so this one. Sauce. Okay, so this the heat sauce. Okay, dried coffee bean. Okay, coffee bean. So those who love to drink uh, coffee. So this is the process. Okay, fresh coffee bean, cover it rainy, okay. remove the coffee skin, okay, and then frying, okay, and then sugar, margarine, grinding, and coffee, and we drink. So basically, so this is the open sun ray uh, on the matte canvas to uh, avoid rain, maybe let's say suddenly when it happens, so they just cover with the canvas. Okay. Okay. 
and then sun drying on the cemented floor using moving roof to avoid rain. Okay. So this is the approach of the open sun drying. Okay. So that's the coffee that we drink. Uh, smoked banana. Okay, just a peel off the banana, cut the banana, then peel off the banana. Okay. Then try to dry. Then I go for the smoking in the fridge of this sixty to seventy, and then sell to the customer. Okay, so the banana. Then we try to chop the banana, and then peel off the banana. And try to dry it conventionally. On the mid of the maybe this one is a wood or bamboo, I'm not sure. sure. Okay, and then we go for the uh, burning underneath of the uh, banana slice uh, to get the smoke uh, uh, feeling, a uh, smoke environment or smoke condition, so that it can be called a smoke banana. Okay, and then the packaging. So this is the the core of the smoke uh, to be put underneath the banana to get the smell of the smoke. Okay. So and then yet after that they come they just straight away uh, package uh, packaging the smoke banana. Okay. So I think I just skip this one. Uh, it's more or less the same, it's just the middle of the type of the processes. Okay, so this one is the tobacco. tobacco using the descent as a heat source, okay, commission of pouring of tobacco. Okay, pressure of the solar drying system, uh, natural convection or first convection. Um, natural convection, um, we, we, we deal with the resisting condition, which is uh, from the natural. First convection, uh, we use other equipment or accessory or device that assist us to do the uh, flow in the form of the drying system. Okay, so let's say for example we want to dry the which, whichever product, and then we switch on the fan. So the moment we switch on the fan, so the one we call that the first convection. Or when we off the fan, we just do it as it is by the environmental. So that one is we call the natural convection. So this is the natural convection dryer, which is they allow the air enter underneath this kind of collector. Okay. And then this one is the, the circulation of the uh, far air throughout here. Okay. So when the flow uh, enter underneath this one, and then by the gravitational, they will go, the hot air will enter upward. And at the same time, when they enter the upward, they will try to dry up simultaneously all the product inside here, and yet they go for the outside, they go to the outside. Okay. So some of the researchers will try to embed this kind of PV, so PV assist the dryer, uh, to to assist maybe the the fan blow or blower or fan, or uh, to suck the air. To ensure that they can have the better volume of the air to enter the system so that it can enhance the drying rate of the system. Okay, so this is the sample of the thing. So what is that? Okay. Uh, whatever agricultural product to be dried. Huh? I'm not sure, sure what's that. Okay, so this is the chamber. Okay, B this one is the so this one uh, is the blower. Uh, to exhaust fan, exhaust fan uh, to receive the hot, assisting hot air to all the, the outside. So this one is the maybe the PV, the top of that model to power the exhaust fan, to power the exhaust fan outside. Okay. So that at the same time they will try to suck the fresh air from the outside. So this is the sample, another cabinet, this one right here. Okay, so this is the another one. And the form of the solar dryer uh, in terms of the open uh, open drain. Okay. Technical develop some drying system. Proceed in a two direction, simple low profile power short life 
competitive motion drying system, high efficiency, high power, long life, expensive drying rate system. Okay. Uh, solar assist drying, drying system, so with the intermittent nature, the low intensity of the solar. Okay, all right. Can be reinvented by the use of the heat storage, auxiliary energy source control system, and vessel facilitator. So this is the common problem, eh? because we we know that we cannot guarantee at every single time we have the available sun ray, so that we have the backup uh, unit uh, to ensure that it can be dry consistently with or without the solar irradiance. Sorry, innovative solar characteristics. So this one, uh, solar assist drying system, air based collector, um, air inlet, yeah, air inlet, solar collector. So by having the sun, then the air will collect all the heat from the collector, yeah, and then go to the blower, then increase the auxiliary meter, and go for the drying chamber to dry out all the agriculture product inside the dry chamber. Some of the design might be have the glass cover. This one is the cross section of the collector. Uh, the glass cover, okay. insulator to, to avoid the to avoid the heat uh, outside to the environment. Okay. So the glass cover to trap to trap all the uh, heat. Okay. Right, all the heat uh, uh, inside the collector. Okay, so the absorber. So let's say the flow inside here, and then they will have the heat. Okay, get the better temperature. Okay, oh, so what is the thing? Air in, oh, what's that there? Okay, so air in. Okay, so insulator, absorber. Air out. Functional single graphic collector. So they allow the flow and inside this collector. Okay. And at the same time, we have the sun ray over here. Uh, give the heat to the collector or glass cover so that this flow will collect all the heat and try to dry up the dry chamber. So basic design of the equation, input versus uh, output versus input. So output, uh, MCP, temperature, so it's the convection, area of absorber, E plate, E ambient, S uh, is the irradiance. Uh, a is the area or the aperture. Aperture means that uh, the the area of the collector. Let's see, so, so it's the aperture. Okay. Right. So normally, previously on water, if you still notice or remember, we are using this one because we have the mass for it, mass in the form of the kilogram or gallon CP. So this time around, we have the convection parts which is related to the area and also the function heat loss for the convection uh, parts and the temperature of course. V groove collector. Uh, it's more or less the same with the previous conventional arrangement uh, like this. Okay. But this one we have this kind of V groove. V groove like the teeth, like the monster teeth. Anyone can share to sir what why why they design this kind of shape? V groove absorber. Anyone can, can share to sir? What is the why why they are trying to do the that one?
Anyone? This is fine. No, sorry. Why the shape like that? Okay, um, thank you for those who are respond. So basically, uh, maybe you can wait the answer from the others. Absorb more heat. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Kind enough, uh, Elvin. But uh, yes, absorb more heat, uh, which refer to the when we are having this V groove absorber, meaning that we we in 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 the search of increasing the area right because previous design we have the very flat very flat uh, very flat this one very flat okay but by having this kind of design we have the we increase the area so that uh, the heat will be trapped or accumulated uh, underneath this collector uh, higher, uh, which leads uh, to the better performance of the thermal collector itself to get the hot air in the flow. Okay, so, so that's the basic idea why we are they they, they go for the V growth absorber just to increase the area of contact or surface area. Okay, so H uh, absorber ABS is the absorber temperature ambient temperature plate H. Okay. So that or uh, this one is the double pass solar collector. Double pass means that they have uh, two root lah, two root, one, one root, second one, one pass and double pass, top and bottom. Okay. So go for that and go for that, go for that and so on. So inlet and outlet. Uh, so by having this kind of double pass contact collector, uh, they claim they can double up or gain a better air collect uh, hair, air, air uh, hot, hot air or by producing the uh, double pass uh, collect okay so this one uh, also have the porous media uh, inside go that one inside and insert the porous media and insulation and yet this go for the outlet so it depends how do you claim your porous media if you put the porous media, your intention to increase the the floor air, oh, sorry, the 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 air, the, the temperature of the air. So you need to be very careful to to select your porous media. Okay. So of course, when you put the porous media, your velocity will be dropped to the resistance of the porous media. Okay. So so you need to be careful on the justification why you want to increase all the uh, things okay so this one as I mentioned just now related to the concentrator or collector with a fin or CPC uh, CPC concentrated parabolic uh, concentrated parabolic cube if I'm not mistaken but then the idea same as goes as previous they want to gain higher irradiance so by having uh, this uh, fin or the cpc or the concentrator parabolic concentrator so that they can have a better heat gain uh, from the surrounding by having this one go this one go this one beside this straight way right so this kind of uh, approach we increase the irradiance which leads to the better thermal efficiency of the air so, so that, that's the thing so the double means that uh, they go on the top and outside on the underneath of the correct okay and that this blue is the solar cell this blue is the solar cell this is the solar cell okay 
okay so the solar cell will uh, produce the electricity uh, maybe to circulate all the hot air to enter the system or to exhaust the system okay. so that's the thing. the fin or they try to increase the area by putting the fin here okay so that uh, more contact area to absorb the heat so that the temperature of the collector increase uh, according so this is the another approach of the solar collector in terms of the air okay so this is the fabrication processes seems like the house house of the right chamber yes oh this guy okay so we stop here any question?